and hello YouTube, this is GS Man, I'm Smart, and I'm going to tell you a brand new video for Gaming with GS, and today we're here on Guild Wars 2, and I want to talk about a requested topic that some of you have been asking me to go over, which is the topic of Gizmos, uh, Heart of Thorns, currency key converting, ascended crafting material converting to loot, such as Bloodstone, Dust, and Imperial Fragments, and Dragonite Ore, there are some converters out there that you can convert Karma, Fractal Relics into loot, and potentially even profit so we're gonna go over a list of very useful and fun gizmos I, I did a bit of research in this so that's why this video took a bit longer to get released um, but essentially this is gonna be a random list it's not in any real order a lot of these gizmos most veteran players will probably know about already uh, but some of the new players and if you if you've been playing Guild Wars 2 for a short amount of time or you really haven't been as invested into the game you haven't really done a lot of the achievements you haven't really uh, you know dug deep into the game really then you may you may find that a lot of these items are very useful you may have never known about them and uh, hopefully by the end of the video you'll actually set some of these items as your goals and you'll try to get these that's kind of what the goal of this video is to sort of inform you about these gizmos and uh, try to get you to have some more goals in the game to go for these things because they can make life a lot more easier they can make life a bit more rewarding in the game and it's, uh, some of these are just really cool and neat to have. Some of these are just cosmetic based. Some of these are, uh, you know, they allow you to get more gold. Some of these allow you to convert things. And other things are just plain fun to use that have no real use, but just, they're just fun to have. So I think this video can be very useful to a lot of you. Some of these items can be very cheap. Some of these can be very expensive. Some are require you to complete specific achievements. Some require you to uh, use gems, obviously. Uh, but nonetheless, a lot of these items are fun to use and can be very extremely useful as well. So I, I've sort of broken these gizmos up into three categories. We have converters, we have uh, portable gizmos, and then we have cosmetic gizmos. So I'm going to go over the converters first since I know a lot of you did want to know about that. Uh, we have quite a few converters in the game that are fairly useful. Now these converters are basically items that allow you to convert either currencies or crafting materials into loot or items that you can then sell on the trading post or to a vendor for for profit. Now they are limited per day. You can only use some of these a certain amount of times per day. Most of these can only be used around three to six times a day, but it is a way to make some gold and profit. I would have made a gold uh, guide method out of this specific trick, but realistically speaking, you don't really get much profit from it and it's not really worth a, a separate video. So what you'll notice that a lot of a lot of things I'm going to say in this video could have had their own video, but I really didn't want to make its own video. So that's why I've sort of compiled this video together with many different topics that will sort of inform you about a lot of these. So converters are great. We have uh, several converters such as Madri, Princess, Star of Gratitude, Herta, uh, we have the Sentinel Aberration, the Anomaly, the Candy Corn Gobbler, and a lot of these. So I'm going to go over each of these uh, very briefly just so you have a good idea of what they all do. Now one of the easier ones to get is a fairly recent one is called Herta. It's basically an item that you get from completing a study in gold achievement. Now this is the achievement where you have to run around Arc Basin and collect the different tablets. Uh, once you've collected all the tablets, you will get Herta. And what this item would do, it allow you to convert 250 Bloodstone Dust, so one entire stack, and you can convert that Bloodstone Dust into some loot. Now the great thing about this specific converter is that it allows you to get some Lodestones and cores from the uh, container that you get when you open the container. You have a wide variety of items that you can get, but lodestones and cores are on the loot table and they're not too rare. So you can actually make a lot of money off of this because some loads and some lodestones and cores sell for like two gold. So great item, not too difficult to get. And it can be very valuable if you don't have Madri 2 yet. Uh, Madri 2 I'll go over next. But this is Herta. I think it's a bit more valuable than Madri because you, know, you can convert an entire stack. Uh, so if, ha if you have a lot of bloodstone dust, obviously this is really good because 250 for, for for one container that can have lodestones or cores. If you have thousands upon thousands of bloodstone dust, this is a great converter. Now we also have Madri 2, which is another converter. The way you can get this is from crafting the ascended Madri back piece, and then you'll automatically obtain Madri 2. Now you do need to have access to Dragon's Reach Part 1 and Part 2 of Living World Season 2. So that's the downside with this specific gizmo is that you have to have some of the previous Living World Season episodes unlocked to actually craft Madri. But if you don't have those episodes unlocked, you may just be best uh, getting Herta or getting some of the later ones I'm going to mention, because some of the later ones also 
also allow you to convert bloodstone dust. Nonetheless, though, if you happen to craft Madri and you get Madri 2, you can convert 50 bloodstone dust to convert to loot from a huge variety of items. Now, unlike Herta, uh, there's, there's a chance you'll get valuable items like tier 6 materials, but most of the time you'll get kind of junk items and you'll get you'll get some gear, obviously, of your level, a masterwork or higher. And that's sort of what you get from all these converters. You get one piece of gear, masterwork or higher, and then you'll get either some junk items, some ingredients or crafting materials. Um, but for a lot of these 50 quantity conversions, you won't get you know as huge of a reward as you would get with Herta, the 250 conversion one. So... I would definitely recommend getting Herta because that one can give you some profit if you have a lot of Bloodstone Dust. I haven't gotten that one yet, but that's my goal to get next. So uh, essentially though, 50 Bloodstone Dust with Madri 2, it will convert into some loot that you can then sell or uh, salvage or just throw away or sell to a vendor. Now Princess, very similar to Madri 2, allows you to convert 50 Dragonite ore and convert that into loot, once again from a huge variety of items. Uh, very similar to Madri, you can get some junk items, you can get equipment, you can get ingredients, crafting materials, some of them can be tier 6, some of them can be tier 1, it's all kind of just random. Now the way you get Princess is by completing the Lion's Arch Exterminator achievement to obtain this item. You basically have to shoot Karka Hatchlings across uh, Lion's Arch, and to start this achievement you have to talk to an NPC in the north side of Lion's Arch. He gives you a rifle and you go around Lion's Arch shooting the hatchlings that are all over the place. A really fun achievement to do, especially if you have some friends who haven't done it yet. A great little activity to do on a night together. And a really fun a scavenger hunt type of thing. I wish they'd do more of these things. And um, a, a really useful gizmo because Dragonite Ore, once again, a lot of Dragonite Ore, some of you may have sitting in your bank or sitting in your inventory. And you can go and put that to use and actually convert that to some so, some sort of profit or value, uh, whether it be you know a rare piece of gear. Sometimes you get a rare piece of gear out of it, and that's easy 30 silver there. So Now next we have the Star of Gratitude. The Star of Gratitude converts 50 Imperial Fragments into a bag of loot from a huge variety of items, just as the last two items that we talked about. Now to get this one, the only downside is it has to be Winter's Day, and uh, you have to collect the ornaments the ornament collecting achievement it's not very hard achievement at all winter's day is coming up so heck this this is video is great timing because if you don't have star of gratitude yet then you can go ahead and get it by completing the ornament achievement and uh, you'll get star of gratitude you can convert your imperial fragments and you can get some more loot now the next two converters that we're going to go over are the Sent are the Sentient Anomaly and the Aberration. Now one thing to note about these two items is they do take uh, two sets of materials. The Anomaly takes 25 Dragonite Ore and 25 Imperial Fragments to convert to loot from a huge variety of items, uh, just as the other ones did. And um, you can basically get this specific gizmo from the Token Collector achievement uh, to obtain uh, the anomaly and you have to collect all the tokens in Ember Bay. If you remember in a previous video that I did talking about Ember Bay and the activities you can do, I mentioned that there are a lot of collectibles you can get and one of these collectibles is collecting all the tokens across the map. If you collect all the tokens across Ember Bay, you'll get the anomaly here and it's another converter. Now the aberration on the other hand, it, you it basically takes 25 Dragonite Ore and 25 Bloodstone Dust and it converts it to loot from a huge variety of items again, just like the last four items we went over the all. All of these except for Herta basically give you random stuff that could be very valuable and could be just junk items. Uh, but essentially, to get this item, you need to complete the Conspiracy of Dunces achievement to obtain to obtain the Aberration. And this is essentially an activity you do in Bloodstone Fen. You have to collect all the journal pages. And when you have all the journal pages for all the journals complete, you'll basically get this item. Now, the last two converters we went over, the Aberration and the Anomaly, uh, they can allow you to convert all of your crafting materials. Now, as we've gone over, Princess is for Dragonite Ore, uh, Madri is for Bloodstone Dust, Hurt is also for Bloodstone Dust. Uh, Bloodstone Dust is typically the item that you get more of. I mean, I have a ton more Bloodstone Dust than I have Imperial Fragments and Dragonite Ore, so I'm guessing that's why they made another one specifically for Bloodstone Dust. But we have Hurt, Madri, Princess, and of gratitude to dump all of our ascended crafting materials into now if you don't want to get those four because you feel like you don't have living world season two you don't want to log in during winter's day and have to remember to do the achievement because you don't want to go around lion's arch collecting all the hatchlings because that can take a bit of a long time 
Um, you don't need to have any of those. You can just get the aberration and the anomaly, which are fairly easy to get. And then you can just convert all of your crafting materials that way. Because those two items, the aberration and the anomaly, take dust, take ore, and take the fragments. So essentially, you don't even need to have all these converters. Just the last two that I mentioned, and you'll be good to go. However, I do recommend getting all these converters, because you're going to be getting so many of these ascended crafting materials that you're going to be able to convert so many of them repetitively because each of these can be used three to six times a day and if you have all five of these items you can convert a ton right now i only have three of the converters i'm going to try to get all the other ones as well so i can continue to continue to convert and continue to get more loot every single day and be able to do it many more times than i would be able to do if i only had like one of the converters or two of the converters so just a note about that now we also have another converter that is called the Candy Corn Gobbler. Now interestingly enough, this one can be used as many times as you want to use. Uh, the only thing is that it requires you to buy it from the gem store, which is the downside. But with that being said, it's actually a really cool converter. Because if you convert three pieces of candy corn, uh, you can get a random transformation or a random boost. Now the boost is the really important part. If you have some boosts in your inventory, you know there's an experience booster, a magic find booster, a crafting booster, a gathering booster, so many other boosters. By just converting three pieces of candy corn, you can get a random boost. And every time you convert three pieces of candy corn and you get a similar boost, it will extend that boost duration by seven minutes. So essentially, you can boost your character up with a ton of different boosts just by converting three pieces of candy corn. Uh, so this is a really neat item, and it's a great way to put candy corn to use other than just converting it to cobs to get Halloween items that are just cosmetics, or other than just selling it to their trading posts, which don't give you much value anyway. So we have that in mind, but also if you think about it, there is a candy corn node that a lot of us have in our home instance, and guess what? You go every day to your home instance to mine that candy corn. If you're like me, you go every day to your home instance to mine all the things and open all your chests. Well. Wouldn't it be great if you can actually put that candy corn to use other than just sell it or stockpile it for Halloween? If you don't like Halloween anyway, you don't like any of the items to offer, then you have candy corn just stockpiling. And rather than just wasting it on the trading post to sell, you know, for, for a few silver, for a few copper per per candy corn, uh, you may as well use it to get some boosts to help you out in magic find or experience or crafting boost or gathering boost, which you can which can help you get, you know, better better gathering results to make even more money. Like imagine if you had a gathering boost from these candy corns and you were able to get a bit more flax seeds, you'll be making more profit in the end. So a really good item to, it's actually a great investment. I would I would recommend getting the candy corn gobbler. It is Halloween specific though, so you have to get it during Halloween. Um, I may be a bit late on that. I should have released this video a bit earlier, but uh, oh well. But uh, a great converter if you have it, uh, put it to use. If not, just uh, think about getting it sometime. Now the next uh, three converters we have are a bit different, uh, but they all sort of work very similar. We have a fractal relinquery, which is one type of converter, and this allows you to convert your fractal relics. If you do fractals a lot, you'll have a lot of these relics sitting in your inventory, and they are very useful. You can buy some pretty cool things with these relics, and uh, you can convert them to pristine relics to buy ascended rings, obviously. But if you do fractals a lot, and you already have all the items, uh, from fractals that you don't need anymore. You're sitting on top of mountains of fractal relics. Well, what do you want to do with these fractal relics? Well, you can use these to convert relics to bags of rare gear, to large crafting bags, to heavy crafting bags. A lot of items that were originally only laurel that you can only buy with laurels. Remember we did a video on uh, how to make gold with laurels. You can basically use your laurels to buy heavy crafting bags and get tier six materials and sell those tier six materials to make gold in the trading post. Well, this is another way to get heavy crafting bags because you can convert your uh, pristine fractal relics to a crafting bag and you can basically make more gold off of that. Now, I believe you can only use this once a day, and I believe some of the items do change every day. So uh, it's a great way to use your fractal relics. The only problem with this is that as useful as it is and as amazing as this item is because if you do fractals a lot you can get a lot of use out of this item but the only downside is that it requires you to complete an ascended recycling achievement to obtain this item and this achievement basically requires you to salvage ascended gear and get each of the essences so by salvaging an amulet by salvaging uh you know a headpiece or a um a weapon you get another essence by salvaging a ring you get another essence there's a lot of different essences you can get there's like five or six essences and you have to continuously salvage ascended gear to get that rare drop now if you're not sitting on mountains of gold and you, know, you want to buy ascended gear off the trading post just to salvage or you want to buy the essences straight off the trading post which are very expensive some of these essences cost like 2,000 gold 
so that already tells you how, how the drop rate is, very low drop rate, then uh, this is something you may just want to keep in the back of your head and passively think about and passively collect. Whenever you get a piece of your Ascended gear, think about, okay, yeah, maybe I can get some progress on the Ascended recycling achievement and you can salvage the gear. If you get an Essence, great, use the Essence and you can start making progress to get that Fractal Relinquary. Otherwise, you can also sell the materials you get from salvaging the Ascended gear. But like I said, this is something, this is something you want to passively complete over time. Um, it, it is a great incentive to salvage this in the gear, to get these essences, to get the Fractal Relinquary. But if you don't refract those and you don't have a lot of Fractal Relics, it's nothing to worry about even, and it's, you may not even uh, bother with it. Now the next one we have is also a really good item. I actually have this item. It's very easy to get. All you have to do is kill the Mouth of Mordremoth under 20 minutes. It's to complete the uh, Mouth of Mordremoth Master Achievement. And a lot of people are killing it now under 20 minutes. So you can uh, get this achievement fairly easily. But what it allows you to do, it allows you to buy Heart of Thorn keys. You know, the specific map keys like the uh, Exalted key or like the Crowbar or uh, a few of the, I forget the other ones. A few of the other ones that are map specific to to that map in Heart of Thorns, and the keys you can actually buy here for free. You can buy a free key every day. Now, why is this so cool? Well, because if you have a lot of the chests in your home instance, and you run into a situation where you're like, okay, I'm gonna open all my chests today in my home instance from the Heart of Thorns specific maps, and you happen to not have any exalted keys, well, you can just buy a free exalted key from the Lay Energy Matter Converter and use that key to open your chest. So it's great for buying keys if you're missing some keys. It's also great to stockpile keys every day. You can continuously buy a key every day and stockpile them. However, what's even cooler about this item is that there's a second tab when you click the Lay Energy Matter Converter that allows you to convert your map-specific currency into other items. Now, if you're sitting on tons of currencies from uh, Verdant Brink or Arc Bays, you're probably sitting on a ton of Aurelian, uh, Aurelium. So if you want to convert that currency into profit, potentially other items, you can do that on the second tab. You can convert it to rune bags, bags of rare gear, heavy crafting bags, sigil bags. You can craft basically, well, you can convert, not craft, you can convert your currency into an item once per day. Now, I believe these items do change every day. Uh, another great gold method to make some gold. However, I was going to a video on it separately but the fact that you can only do it once a day kind of makes it uh, lackluster so you can't really make a huge profit off of it but compared to laurels to get a heavy crafting bag you can now get uh, for you know some map currency so a great item to convert some of your currency into into other items into profit if you have a lot of these currencies now, if you're not aware about uh, what we're talking about right now, I know I've mentioned, you know, the home instance nodes a lot in this video. If you're not aware about the nodes in your home instance, I do have a video that goes over the home instance and how you can get specific nodes in your home instance so that it's worth going to your home instance every day and getting that extra loot. If you want to check that out, I'll leave an annotation on screen right now. Now, the last converter that we have is the Karmic Converter, and this is very hard to get because you need to complete the Exotic Hunter achievement to obtain this item. You have to unlock 34 specific exotic skins, and if you want to buy them all off the trading post, that's roughly around 300 plus gold. So once again, more so of a passive thing you want to keep in the back of your mind, a collection that you just want to eventually get done. And when you get it done, you have a Karmic Converter. It's very similar to the last two items that we went over, where you can use your Karma to buy something every day. And once again, you can buy crafting bags, bags of rare gear, much so like the previous item we talked about, instead of using keys or instead of using uh, fractal relics, you can use karma. So another very useful item, if you have lots of karma, uh, you can make some money off of this. Uh, I'm not sure how valuable or profitable it is because I've never obviously used the item. I don't have all 34 exotic skins yet, but it can be very useful. And to use it every day, I imagine it's it's a daily routine that you can add to your list of things to do. You can do your dailies, you can do your home instance farming, and you can use all your converters. Great way to make some extra cash on the side. So those are all the converters that we have. Hopefully you found that informative. And uh, once more converters come out, uh, just you know, pay attention to the, to the patch notes. I'll obviously go over additional converters that come out in my review videos for different patches. But these are all the converters that we currently have in the game. So I was going to go over the next set of gizmos uh, from this entire list here, but I just noticed as I'm editing the audio here in Audition that the video is actually very long, 38 minutes long. So I've decided to split this video into two videos. The first time I'm doing this because I just feel like it's a bit too long for a gizmo video. And nobody wants to sit through uh, 38 minutes of listening about gizmos. And essentially, a lot of you are just here for the converters and you don't really care for the other things. Uh, so if you're just here for the converters, this is the video basic. I'm deciding, I'm deciding to end it right here. And the other gizmos, which go over a bit more about mounts, 
which go over a bit more about some of the gem store specific stuff, which go over a bit more uh, cosmetic type of things like kites and balloons and all kinds of other cool things and useful things too. There are useful things uh, in the next video that, that I'll link here for that goes over the other gizmos. There are useful gizmos in there, but uh, some of them do require you to use gems. If you want to take a look at it and just skim through it, uh, the Mystic Forge Conduit is really good. I do go over explaining that, so you may want to watch the beginning of the video because I do go over the Mystic Forge Conduit, which is really good to have. But other than that, it's mainly going to be about gem store specific stuff or more so about uh, just cosmetic things and the permanent contracts and whatnot. So if you want to check that out, see the next video. I have a link on screen right now. If not, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. But hopefully you'll watch the next video anyway because it is very informative and very useful. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching as always. And this is GS Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. And I'll see you in the next video if you're watching the next one. So see you in just a minute.